when you're taking a game from one state and making it into another, a lot of times when people do this, they don't realize what they're doing to the gameplay and why it is so different now than it was before. There's a whole bunch of different things that are now introduced. Hi there, welcome to Games Over Coffee Consulting. People give me their games, I give feedback on their game design. Today we're talking about Flap in 3D by Bad Games Factory. The game's developer is called Yellowfent right now, but they're changing their name too. Bad Games Factory, which is hilarious. I love that name. What is Flap in 3D? So Flap in 3D is very much, it's, uh, it's a 3D flappy bird. This person said, I know the game doesn't really have that interesting of mechanics, so I understand if you don't want to make a video on it. You hold that right there, sir. The game, the game's mechanics don't make it interesting. I mean, yes, a game can have interesting mechanics, but a game can have really, you know, plain mechanics and still be really interesting as a game. It just really depends on the idea that you're trying to portray here. With that aside, what I want to talk about here is adaptation and what it means to make a game from one state to another state. I actually did a pretty big series on this. I, I, well, it's a five part series. It's not a huge series, but the last video was very big on my main channel, right? I made a five part video series on why Sonic doesn't work in 3D because of the way they were designing him. Sonic actually works really well in 3D when it's paid attention to, when his design is changed, much like in the game Sonic Dash. This is what I want to talk about with your game and talk about how you've taken a game and have adapted it to something different and what that means. When someone takes a game like Sonic, they're making it for a specific type of experience. In Sonic's case, it was all about fast platforming, right? Just going really, really fast, doing what Mario does, except faster, basically. Now, if you were to adapt that game into a 3D environment like Sonic Adventure, then you have to change the design. Mario changed their design from action platforming to puzzle platforming because they thought about the way that the player moves around in the 3D space and tried to figure out what was motivating the player to go certain directions and whatnot. And it worked really well, right? Super Mario 64 being one of the most iconic games ever made. Sonic Adventure though, not so much. And it's because they were basically doing the same kind of design that Sonic had in 2D. Adaptation, when you're taking a game from one state and making it into another, a lot of times when people do this, they don't realize what they're doing to the gameplay and why it is so different now than it was before. There's a whole bunch of different things that are now introduced. For example, we'll talk about perspective and camera view and what I want to call visual measurement. I talked about visual measurement a little bit in the live video that I made on Lucent Bounds. When you're looking at Flappy Bird, the original game by Doc Gears, when you're playing the game, what would you say the player is measuring with their eyes to try to figure out what to do with the game, right? Because the challenge is to get through as many pipes as possible, as many gaps as possible. In order to do that, what does the player need to do? What do they need to measure with their eyes? The player has two dimensions of measurement, right? The x-axis, the y-axis. The player has to figure out how far they can go up versus how far they can go down and be able to strategize by timing their taps. They're simultaneously measuring the x-axis and y-axis depending on the types of uh, things that are coming toward them. Now, if you take that and you switch it to 3D, what we're doing here, Flap in 3D is a little bit different as opposed to just making this game 3D. So now the game is completely different, right? Now the game does no longer is measuring the X and Y axis. Now it's all about moving forward and measuring the Z axis also. What's cool about this is that I think the game actually does pretty well. I want to start off saying this game is really fun. I, I got really into it. My highest score was 777. So I got into the game quite a lot. And the reason why I think it works so well is because the game doesn't exactly copy Flappy Bird. And I think that's really good because the game of Flappy Bird was meant for a 2D space, not 3D space. There are some issues with this, but I do want to talk about why it doesn't matter at first. So instead of a single row of pipes, we now have three rows of pipes. I'm not sure if this was the first rendition of the game, but that is what's happening here. The other thing that's happening is now we have the inclusion of golden pipes, which are different from the green ones. But specifically, I want to talk about the visual measurement in this game and why it matters. So going forward in this game is basically the same thing as measuring the length of, of the, the x-axis in the original game. However, in the original game, you're measuring the x-axis because of how wide the pipes are. Because if you go through a gap, then you don't want to hit the pipe on the top or bottom uh, because they take up space, right? So you need to time your tap just enough so that the bird can go through the gap without hitting any part of that pipe. The same thing goes in this game where the player has to go forward, but thankfully because of how fast the bird is moving, it doesn't really matter that much. When you go through a pipe, you don't really have to pay attention too much to hitting the top and bottom of the pipe because it moves so fast past the bird. Another reason why you don't really have to think about that is because the camera is locked on the bird's position. And it's really strange when you look at this on like a YouTube video or a, or a trailer, when you're watching someone play this game, it looks really weird to switch instantaneously from left and right and for the, the bird to 
to hop up and down, but the camera does not move whatsoever because the camera's locked onto the bird's position. However, it actually really does work with the visual measurement because of other 3D games. Usually the player has to figure out exactly what's around them. So the camera has to either orbit the character or has to somehow keep in one space and have the character move with the camera just kind of following them in a, in a floaty kind of way. So in a game like Subway Surfers, for example, the camera doesn't lock behind the character the whole time. The camera stays pretty stationary and the character moves left and right and up and down. Same with a game like Temple Run or Sonic Dash. Camera stays in basically in one spot and doesn't shift immediately with the character. It gives leeway so that the player understands what obstacles the character can overcome and which ones they can't. This game, it doesn't really matter that much. And I think that's what's really cool about this is when you're playing the game, because most of your visual measurement in this game is just about not hitting the face of the pipes, right? The sides of them right here, then having the camera directly behind the bird actually makes a lot of sense and having it move instantaneously with you isn't bad at all. It doesn't feel bad when you're playing it. However, the game does still have some remnants of the original Flappy Bird in here where you can die by hitting the pipe's uh, ends, right? By hitting the top of the pipe with your head or the bottom pipe with your belly, right? You, you can still die that way. And that feels a little weird because in order for me to be very aware of where I am in the 3D space and avoid something like that, I would need to have depth perception, which I don't have in this game. And that's the biggest issue with a lot of 3D games going forward is that you have to have some sort of idea of depth perception. Um, that's visual measurement, but along the Z axis. Now, I think there are ways to circumvent this, but um, I think it's too detailed to get into for a game like this. But you could have different types of rendering kind of things where you have fog that lets you know how far something is. But really, that's that's too detailed for a game like this. I think the way that you have it, I think is really good. But I wouldn't have the challenge of not hitting the pipes individually. Like it would make a lot more sense for these pipes to be just cardboard cutouts and be two dimensional as opposed to actual three dimensional pipes. When this person submitted their game to me, they said they were proud of the golden pipes because they thought they made the game more dynamic. I'm not sure if they meant more dynamic from the original game of the 2D one or more dynamic from maybe their first version of the game that didn't have golden pipes perhaps. I'm not sure. But in this game, you go through the green pipes and you get one point per green pipe, but going through the golden pipes gives you three points. But of course that increases as you go forward. And so you have a, a cumulative score. So three the first time, four the next, five the next, and it keeps going up from there. However, you're very much at a disadvantage if you ever go through one of those green pipe gaps. This idea of going through the green pipes and getting put at a disadvantage for your overall score kind of reminds me of the way that you play Trackmania when you're trying to beat a ghost on the track. So in Trackmania, every time that you hit a wall, your speed instantly stops. So you're, like your momentum completely is just killed. So it makes a lot more sense to just restart the race as opposed to try to continue. And that's kind of how I feel right here. I feel like my momentum is completely dead as soon as I go through a green pipe and just get a plus one as opposed to like a plus 14. In my mind, because you've basically made this game into now a 3D infinite runner. The fact that you have golden pipes in here that increases the score a lot more, I think is a really cool idea, but the motivation is a little different now because the score in Flappy Bird in the original was synonymous with the distance that you went. The farther you got, the higher your score was, and that was just it. But in this game, you can get a higher score still going the same distance. So your skill is still there, but you're not really awarded for going through the green pipes as much as you're awarded for going through the yellow ones. What I would say is to kind of tweak your game design a little bit here to where you're motivating the player, but just make the green pipes just completely solid or make them some sort of barriers that the player has to avoid. Because the idea of moving left and right, I think is really good in this game because you have to be a little bit more on your toes and try to figure out things as you go forward. So once you add just barriers, then it doesn't really matter what kind of score that you have. Otherwise, a different thing that I would do is I would just take out the score completely and I would basically give the player lives. And the goal of the game would be to get as far as possible forward as much as you can. And then every time that you hit one of these barriers and you lose a life, the player is then challenged on building their skills so that they don't lose any lives, right? That's what they're motivated to do as opposed to just try to get the highest score possible. They're trying to go as far as possible. They're also trying to make sure that they do that with the least amount of lives lost. Based on that, you could make this game any way you wanted to, depending on what you want the player to do. I know you mentioned that you want the player to play this game kind of like the same way that Flappy Bird was played with the, the casual nature of it. And I think it is well suited for that. I'm not sure how well it would work on the phone. I would have to try it myself. I don't see a lot of people playing this game casually on a PC. When I played this game, I typically played it for a long time, like 
probably 10 to 15 minutes, which was a bunch of lots of short runs, right? Like I would play this game like a lot of short runs in a row, basically. And some games are just like that, you know, and that's fine. The idea that this is on PC, I think there's a way to make this game a lot bigger if you were to change the the speeds that the player goes forward, maybe change the different kinds of obstacles, maybe moving obstacles, different types of levels, power-ups perhaps, things like that. I think this game has a lot of potential. Uh, this is a very small game, it has very small feedback, that's uh that's what i have thank you so much bad games factory for submitting this game to me i thought it was actually very interesting to play and i had a lot i had a lot of fun playing this game this is definitely my type of game i'm, I'm very much into the short arcade experiences so thanks again for this this was great um if you want to submit another game to me later on please feel free to do so if you are not this developer and you have a game that you want to see me cover, please submit it to me. If you want to see how long it's going to take for me to cover your game, I have a list of games that I'm currently covering right now. There's a link in the description. There's a Trello board that shows how many games that I'm that's on my list at the moment. So you will be added to the bottom of the queue as soon as you submit your game to me. So thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later.